dramatic day, but as a former copper, you've got to say a, a great result, a job well done, an intensive search, air, water, land, the boys in blue, they brought the bacon home. And the girls. Yep. Yep. Sorry, mate. Well done, the <laughs> Metropolitan Police. Yep. Very good. And huge congratulations and thanks to those public-spirited members of the public mm. who rang 999, who gave that information, because it seems pretty clear to me there has been a significant input from the good people of Chiswick and other parts of West London. Mm. So a very big thank you to them as well. Mm. And I sincerely hope that one of them, as we speak, is claiming that £20,000 yeah. reward that the Metropolitan Police offered yesterday for information leading mm. directly to his arrest. I sincerely hope that is claimed. It's interesting because I, I live um, by another park in Peckham. Police helicopters are often in the air for all sorts of searches, but this was clearly very, very coordinated um, on, on the lo on local next door group messages I've been following um, throughout the early hours here. I was sent there were helicopters and there were river boats. They were shining lights into an area of the bank. There were terror units, um, ter terror unit vans there, a an entire police dragnet. A coordinator joined up a very powerful investigation when it came to the end game. And probably mobile CCTV cameras with a facial recognition mm. capability because the Met have deployed those fairly sparingly and in a very targeted manner. This would have been a perfect sort of operation for that. But now is the time for everyone, and I mean the public and the media, to take a collective deep breath. Yep. Because Mr Khalif has not been convicted of anything. Not yet. Those three charges that he faces were due to be heard in court in November. That's right. We must all, including the public, we must not say anything in the mainstream media or on social media that would potentially jeopardise mm. a fair trial. I am sure everybody wants to see that yep. happen. So exactly. please exercise restraint, everyone. Just in terms of what those charges are, it's um, attempted, um, Khalid attempted to elicit information about an individual who was or had been a member of His Majesty's forces, um, which was a, of a kind likely to be useful to a person committing or preparing an act of terrorism. That's the Section 58A Terrorism Act offence. And of course, the second one was the bomb hoax by placing an article with intent. Those charges have being faced in November, but back to And the also a breach of the Official Secrets Act, but yeah. they are charges. Nothing has been proven yet, and it needs to go in front of a yeah. court, and the whole justice system needs to run its course. Yeah. In terms of, um, we were speaking there with Perry Benton, uh, he will now face a, a stern, stiff, additional sentence of escaping prison. So he's going to be um, very, very highly guarded, very highly protected, perhaps getting the sort of security he should have had before he was released into Wandsworth. Yeah, he may face a charge of escaping from lawful custody. That is entirely possible. But, of course, the police, with the ongoing investigation, will consult with the Crown Prosecution Service, who ultimately will make a decision on any further charges mm. that he may face. Mm. And once again, he mustn't be convicted in the court of public opinion. However... What is inevitable is that he won't be going back to Wandsworth Prison because mm. he's already successfully escaped from there once. So I suspect he might find himself in Belmarsh, which is, of course, a Category A prison mm. and has astonishing levels of security. And I'm sure Mr Khalif, should he be so minded, would not be able to escape from there. Well, I don't think a single prisoner has ever escaped from Belmarsh. It, it takes hours to get into the place. In fact, lawyers often complain it takes so long to get in. They miss parole meetings inside. Perhaps uh, Mr Caniff should have been in a prison like that all along. Yes, I think those questions are rightfully already being asked and we'll see what the investigation bears forth. I'd be very interested to find out how he sourced those straps because, remember, the Justice Secretary, Alex Chalk, did say to Parliament on Thursday straps were found underneath that lorry. So that investigation now must run its course. The answers will become public at some stage in the future. But for now, back in custody, where, of course, he should have been all the time, and many of those police officers can stand down and possibly 
all the inevitable huge amount of resources mm. perhaps can be deployed to combating some other types of crime. I was talking to Chip Chapman there, former uh, armed service uh, man, um, about the residual risk of the sort of information uh, that Mr Khalif may have got his hands on, secrets for UK, UK eyes only, intel, crypto, uh, military comms. How much of a pressing matter do you think that would be for the, for the police to make sure that those loopholes are closed? Well, the army employed him, mm. so I'm sure the army will have reviewed their systems after he was dismissed by them, because he was dismissed a few months ago. I'm not a military man and I can't really speak for them, but it, it makes absolute sense that if a member of the armed services is charged with offences, that they will then review their systems to say, how could this have come about? Mm. Now, um, obviously you're speculating about the £20,000 reward, but as a former police officer yourself, um, how do you think these officers will be feeling about this, this hugely successful, very high profile capture today? Job done. Yeah. I think ministers will be as relieved as anybody because imagine if the worst case scenario had happened and Mr Khalif had popped up at a press conference in Tehran, for example. That would have been hugely embarrassing, yeah. absolutely catastrophic. But of course, that is not the situation. He was found in West London. So there'll be a lot of relieved people. But of course, there will still be red faces particularly within the prison service, who basically committed a schoolboy error mm. in prison terms in allowing this man to escape in the manner that he did. Precisely. I think a lot of people were, were concerned that Daniel Khalif may become a prize asset for Iran. Um, the nightmare scenario of a photograph with an Ayatollah. Um, but he didn't make it as far as Te Tehran. In fact, he didn't even make it as far as Tooting. Um, it was a superb operation. So you've got to feel happy about this today. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted for the Met. I'm absolutely delighted. They did attract some criticism earlier on today in the media, which I found surprising. I mean, I've been renowned for putting my yeah. size 12s up yeah. the rear end of police forces when they've not done what they should have done. But in this regard, it is very much job done, stand down and... Maybe some of them might just go to the pub this evening. <laughs> We'd hope so. Peter Blexey, thank you for joining us on GB News.